Good afternoon, welcome to In The City Live. It's Foundation Day here at Cardiff City and while it could be a very nervous occasion on the pitch this afternoon, results elsewhere pending off the pitch. It's actually uh, it's a lovely day here in the Welsh capital and uh, there's quite an atmosphere because like I said it is Foundation Day and we're trying to get um, some more youngsters in the community involved in sport and some tryout sports here going on in, uh, in what's usually the away car park. I have with me my guest this afternoon, Dean Pimble, Sports Engagement Manager at Cardiff City Stadium. Dean, what's today all about? Um, this is our annual Foundation Day so as a big thank you to all our beneficiaries for the Foundation. We've put on an event in the car park so we've got um, we've got our fun fair over there, along with some of the activities which we, we run in the foundation. We've got our parental shootout, um, hockey, netball, cricket, um, some other sports which we, we currently run in the foundation. And uh, a couple of the lads, got especially some of the academy boys, milling around trying to get involved in some, uh, trying the hands of some new sports. It's uh, really, in a microcosm, it's exactly what the community is about, isn't it? Yes, definitely. You know, we want to get kid, more kids engaged in not just football, but all sports um, across the board. So we've had got the 21s down here. Also, some of the first team players have been down um, playing some tennis and some basketball. So seeing if they can, um, uh, you know, emulate some of the kids as well. And in terms of the first team squad, we know what it's been like. Uh, it's easy to judge, isn't it, first team squad, what the season's like. You look at the league table and you judge it. That, that, how's the season been for the foundation this year? Um, it's been really, really good um, within the foundation. Um, we engage with 15,000 kids across the um, primary schools um, and, like I said, across a variety of sports. So we're not just concentrating on football these days. It's more multi-sports, um, just getting more and more kids out playing more sports um, more times during the week. Thank you very much. It's Dean Pimble, Sports Engagement Manager here at Cardiff City. And like I said, Foundation Day. So you've still got time to get yourselves down here if you can this afternoon. It's going to be a good day. should be a good match as well. We said there's results elsewhere that could determine, uh, could determine our afternoon also. But as things stand, Cardiff City very much still in with a chance of the playoffs. And this is the team that Russell Slade has picked going into today's match against Bolton. Bolton enter Saturday's fixture 13 matches without a win, 10 points adrift at the bottom of the table and already assured to be playing League One football next season. The entire struggle of the campaign has been completed under a shroud of off-field turmoil, which eventually culminated in relegation being confirmed following last weekend's 4-1 defeat to promotion chasing Derby. It marked the third time in four matches that the club has conceded in excess of three goals and an 11th time on the season including a 6-0 defeat at Bristol. Tuesday's goalless draw with Charlton, a result that saw the similarly troubled Addicts join them in relegation, marked just the seventh clean sheet of the season, a record equal by Brentford and only beaten by Fulham, who have only managed three blanks. All in all, the Trotters have conceded a league worth 78 times this season at a ratio of 1.8 per game. Midfielder Liam Feeney currently represents a statistical anomaly by leading the club in terms of percentage in championship minutes played at 73%, despite the fact that he joined Ipswich on loan back in March. Goalkeeper Ben Amos is primed to overtake Freeney in that category at the weekend, whilst in terms of outfield players, only Mark Davis or Dean Moxie could conceivably overtake him. In terms of goals, and despite missing a fair portion of the season through injury, it's Zach Clough who leads the club scoring charts with six, including two from the penalty spot this month. Fellow striker Gary Medine is just one shy on five, as is the aforementioned Feeney. Yet with just 39 goals scored from 43 matches, only Charlton, Forrest and the MK Dons have netted fewer. Bolton have struggled in front of goal all season. They've also failed to score on 18 occasions, yet they have also netted more than twice in a game on 10 occasions, including December's reverse fixture with ourselves and this places them comfortably mid-table in this regard, and better than Derby, Middlesbrough and Sheffield Wednesday, all teams still holding promotion aspirations. Where Bolton have severely struggled is against teams in the top half of the table. The Trotters have won just four matches all season, none of them have come against teams in the top half of the table, 
In fact, they've lost 15 of their 22 matches against top 12 opposition thus far, and conceded 40 goals in the process. They're also yet to taste victory on the road in 1516. That includes against non-league Eastley, who took them to a replay in the FA Cup. Both of which are facts that they're surely desperate to put right before the end of the season. Head-to-head -head is 27 years since Cardiff beat the Bolton on home soil, and the Trotters, then managed by Neil Lennon, completed an impressive league double last season with a pair of 3-0 victories, including a late-season rout at Cardiff City Stadium, which saw Icelandic international Eidegger Johnson on the score sheet. And speaking of Bolton and Icelandic internationals, a mention of this season's reverse fixture, a 3-2 win for City, gives us an opportunity to replay Mark Denham's moment of infamy. Gallison, it's a wonderful right-footed strike, but it's been ruled out. Oh, I'm sorry to tell you it's been ruled out. What's that been given for, Ash? I believe it hit the outside of the side net in and not inside as we <laughs> oh, felt. No. Me like oh, you, dear. I thought it was a once-in-a-career strike from Aaron Gunnison. Oh dear, I'm sorry, I've got a feeling that's going to end up on YouTube, isn't it? Right, so as we heard from Ashley, it's been a dismal season for Bolton club and fans alike. Relegated and for a club that spent many years in the Premier League, how hard is it going to be for them to come here on Saturday and, and churn out a performance? Obviously they're down, but I think sometimes if you go down or you've got nothing to play for, you play with a bit more freedom and you've not got really anything to lose. So I can't, don't feel, think really we should concentrate on them and be more focused on ourselves because, like I said, they could just come and, you know, nothing to lose, play really well. Now, considering we need three wins to round off the season, would it be naive to hope that Bolton, being where they are, 13 games out of win, would be the ideal start to that run? Yeah, I think Saturday will be the perfect start to, 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 to win uh, the first match uh, that we have to win three matches. So it will be the perfect start. But what Matt say, uh, yeah, they play, uh, they play uh, like uh, freedom guys and uh, because they already relegated. And uh, yeah, it's the same like, uh, uh, how do you say it? Yeah, I don't know how do you say it in English, but... Any other game? Uh, yeah. Just like that, any other game. Yeah, it's a perfect start for us to win Saturday and to give us confidence for the last uh, last two games. So, especially considering Sheffield Wednesday and Birmingham are the last two games, they're going to be hard games, aren't they, Matt? They are, but we go to Sheffield, especially if they don't pick up a result the weekend, then the pressure will be on them at home to beat us. So, yeah, they'll both be tough games, but winnable at the same time. 